Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show for Friday, January 21st, 2022. Welcome to another eBay video. Today's main topic is going to be a little different than usual. Normally we talk about problems we encounter as an eBay seller. Today I'm going to discuss problems we encounter as an eBay buyer as I've encountered another bad seller. So we're going to talk about that and we're going to get your ideas and your opinions and we're also going to talk about your comments, questions and concerns from last week. One thing that has not changed is the weather. Still no sunny days here, nothing, nothing but clouds and snow and occasional rain, but no sun whatsoever. I say this week in and week out. When is the last time I came out here on a sunny day? We don't get in. Let's go inside and let's get the eBay video started. All right, guys, we're going to start out with your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video. Dan Frisco wrote, Joe, your last story. I had the same issue a few years ago. Title, condition, description, and quantity all showed one available for a vintage birthday card. The buyer paid, I shipped. They left me a negative saying they thought they were getting more cards plus envelopes, their assumption. Never message me before the purchase to ask and make sure. I only had pictures of the one card, no additional cards and no envelopes, and I didn't use any plurals in the listing and I stated in the description what you get one card eBay would not remove the neg because they stated it was the buyer's opinion. I guess to assume more included in a listing when I clearly stated it was one card throughout the listing. We deal with some morons on the daily on all sides of eBay. So no, you don't just get them in eBay motors as these people populate every crevice of eBay. Dan Frisco, from what you're telling me, that comment should have been removed with alacrity by eBay. Now, be honest, Dan, how many years ago was this? Was it like 10 years ago? Because back then, I agree with you, they wouldn't remove any unjustified negs. But in the last year or two, I will say eBay has been very, very fair to me, and hopefully to many of you, about removing unfair negative feedback. Dennis Copper wrote, Joe, I feel your pain, as Bill Clinton would often say. Yesterday, I got a message from an eBay potential buyer. She said, quote, how many am I getting for that price, unquote. I always block first. I was in a good mood, so I replied, quote, one, unquote. No other words. From past history on eBay, I will guarantee you that I will get a reply saying something like, quote, the price is too high for one, unquote. Not only that, I will eat a hubcap if that doesn't happen. That is how confident I know these people. Now tell me, do they really think I'm going to hold their hand while they contemplate buying my item? If they can't afford my item, then get the hell out of here. Go buy jelly beans or penny candy down the block. Dennis, I hate when people write that to me. How many am I getting? We talked about this in last week's video. Like Dennis said, I block them first. Anytime they say that, because nothing good can come of it. And if I'm in the right mood, I usually respond back and I say, how many do you see in the picture? What does it say in the title? Look at the price. No reasonable person would expect to get four for this price. Because some people are really just plain stupid. It's true. Duncan VR wrote, Regarding sending offers to watches, we must be able to see who we're sending them to and have the option to remove them from the send offer to watches. This is because I had sent an offer to a watcher the other day. The guy accepted it, but then couldn't pay. Why? Because he was in Morocco, a place I don't even ship to. Buyers from that country should not be able to even see my items, let alone watch them. eBay needs to fix this. 
It just wastes my time when I have to block the ID and relist. Joe, sales have been very good, no slowdown. Duncan, I agree with you, eBay should fix that. There are quite a few loopholes on eBay, more than I even have time to ever discuss. I don't know why they don't do anything about this. Your guess is as good as mine, boss. 5797029, Mike wrote, Sales are still good this year. No great days or bad days. After a period of no returns, they're coming in almost every day. Buyers just toss these fragile parts back in the box with loose parts they have removed and a little filler to protect them. I recently received a fragile Buick Lucerne grill that the buyer ordered by mistake. He wrapped the grill in plastic wrap and stuck a return label on it. No box. Miraculously, it arrived undamaged. Since the rate increase at FedEx, UPS is now my go-to carrier. UPS has been between $5 and $10 less than FedEx. The exceptions are FedEx ground and small packages to USPS. I agree with you there, Mike. I use UPS exclusively for all my large items, especially going out west. But for my small first-class items, they still go with the post office. And I'm satisfied, you know, I haven't had any complaints with either about items taking too long. So, yeah, I got that going for me. One other thing I wanted to mention about his comment. I think there was one other thing. Oh, yeah. Mike mentioned about the buyer who sent his items back with no filler in them. Bad as that is, I think it's worse when a seller does it. Meaning, if we buy an item from John Smith, and the item's in beautiful condition, and he sends us the item dumped in a box with no protection, I hate that. And it happens. Flippin' Ain't Easy wrote in a comment about my bad lighting. Joe, I have to say it, but your lack of sun situation dictates that you would be better off setting up a small photo area, one that would accommodate a set of hubs, and a couple of LED lights on Amazon for about $50. Lighting technology is better now than, say, two years ago. Also, trust me on this, I know it's not the same, but it's not bad, and you can take photos on your own time, not when you have to rely on the weather, which we know you can't. I know you didn't want to hear this. However, as a friend of the channel, I had to say it. John from the Flippin' Ain't Easy channel. John, of course, is correct. 100% correct. We never get any sunny days. John, there's one point I want to bring up to you and everybody. Let's talk about lighting. Yes, I really do need lighting. But the thing is, let me see how to say this tactfully. It's easier to say than to do in many cases. Everybody is good at different things in life, okay? Everybody has an Achilles heel, a weak point. My weak point is anything to do with technology or even tangently connected to technology, okay? Now, why? Is it because I'm a stupid person? No, I'm not stupid. It's because we didn't have it in high school. I've said this so many times. If I had somebody here, somebody could stop in and show me how to do a particular thing, okay? After witnessing the person do it once or twice, I could pick it up. But I can't learn it on my freaking own. I can't. The point I'm making is about the lighting. I had a bad experience a couple of years ago, like John said. I wanted some lighting. A friend of mine suggested some particular lights, and I went and bought them, and they were terrible. It was money wasted. So just saying, go out and buy lighting is great, but I am not an expert on lighting. I wouldn't know which ones to get. Are you following me? That is the main reason that I've never done it. It's not the money. Don't worry about that. I can afford the lighting, all right? I don't know what ones to buy, all right? 
And rather than aggravate myself and get frustrated and go through Amazon for three hours, I'd rather spend that time on eBay doing listings. I hope that makes sense. Ruby Ng wrote regarding the videos that I make. The videos can be as long as you want them to be, and I'll still watch them. Don't worry if they're too long. And the last comment from Bill Still, I greatly enjoyed this. From your great impromptu singing to your eBay story comedy routines, it was a blast. Thank you. I'm glad when I get comments like that because it tells me that I'm putting content out there that you guys like and enjoy. And that is what I'm trying to do. I give you a truthful, hard-hitting look at being a seller on eBay. All right? I don't sugarcoat anything, and I'm not a naysayer. I'm an honest dude, and I think I come across as such. What I want to discuss today, my main topic, is being a buyer on eBay and getting stung. Let me tell you exactly how this went down, and then I'm going to take your comments on this issue. First of all, remember a few weeks ago when I bought a cheap cassette player slash radio on Amazon and it was a non-working piece of junk. I made a video of me smashing it, which gave me immense satisfaction. I did not return the $17 item. I enjoyed smashing it much more and getting the word out there. Many of you guys suggested that I buy an old school tape recorder on eBay, the kind with the buttons on the bottom. And you guys, I believe were right. That's what, probably what I should have done at the first place. I'm sure most of you guys had one of those tape recorders when you were young. I know I did. So, a couple of weeks ago, right after the, that incident, I went on to eBay, and I wanted to look for a good tape recorder. I found a few, but there was one that really caught my eye, and I'll tell you why. Let's just say, for the argument's sake, it was a Panasonic. All right? The title said, let's just say, Panasonic Tape Recorder, fully tested. I'm going to yell, anybody has headphones on, I'm going to yell two words. Fully tested! That, to me, was the selling point. Somebody selling something that's fully tested means it works, I guarantee freaking tea it works. I bought the item. All right, I bought the item last Monday. Not the one that just passed Dr. Martin Luther King Day, not that Monday, the one previously. I mentioned this to you in last week's video, if you go back. And I complained last Friday that the seller hadn't shipped it yet. <laughs> I don't know how I find these people, man. So what happens? This Monday was Dr. Martin Luther King Day, and I heard nothing. On Tuesday, the seller wrote to me. It's now been over a week. He still hasn't shipped it, and he blames Dr. Martin Luther King holiday, saying that the reason why he didn't ship it was because of that day, which is bull because he had a whole week to ship it, right? Never did. So that was the first warning sign. But if he was going to ship it Tuesday... I'll bite the bullet because I really need this tape recorder. I've been waiting for it for, year, for a long time. He writes to me, was it Wednesday or Thursday? He writes to me, Joe, I'm not going to send you this item. I'm actually selling this for a friend of mine, and I just inspected it, and it doesn't work. I'm going to relist it on eBay for less money. I'm going to have to give you a refund. It said, freaking tested on the description, right in the title. Tested! Fully tested! I went with the seller's words that it would work. The seller, for the record, has 100% feedback with no negatives, okay? He said he's going to return my money. I rarely encounter this problem. I have not received any communication from eBay 
or anybody saying my money has been returned to me. Can any one of you tell me succinctly how I will know if he returned the money? Now, I have no reason to believe he won't, except that it's Friday already and I'm getting concerned. All right? What would you do in my position? I hate, absolutely hate, to leave any seller negative feedback. It just goes against my grain unless they outright steal from me. For instance, if this guy does not return my money and I have to get eBay involved, then he deserves a negative feedback. But if he does return my money, let's say he gives it to, gives it to me tomorrow, which is Saturday, well, I'm gonna overlook it because I just don't wanna hurt a seller, all right? It's true that he should have inspected the item before listing it. That's his fault. It's also his fault for not shipping it in a timely manner or at least telling me a day or two later, hey, Joe, I screwed up. The thing doesn't work. Only two days would have been lost instead of almost two freaking weeks. I still have no tape reporter. Oh, this is freaking... No, I mean, I'm, I'm pissed off, okay? I'm not going to lie to you. I'm pissed off because I would never do this to a customer. I treat my customers like royalty. If they buy an item on Monday, that item is out Tuesday. Even last year during COVID, when I had a three-day handling time on my listings, I did that to protect me. I still shipped the very next day, and I continue to do so, which is why I have such glowing feedback. My customers love me. Conversely, I can understand a customer getting pissed off when a seller jerks them around. And when sellers like this don't provide the service they promise, it leaves a bad taste in the buyer's mouth and they're going to possibly not come back to eBay and they're probably going to go elsewhere. And you know, none of us want to see that. So given everything I've just told you guys, what would you do now? Again, there are two possible scenarios. If he does not return the money and I have to get eBay involved, I think he deserves to be negged. I think you guys will agree, but I want to hear from you. Number two, if he does return the money, I have no plan on negging him because I just can't in good conscience hurt a seller. But I want to hear from you guys. What would you do if he returns the money, you know, in a timely manner? What I'm going to do right now is take a drink from one of these small cans of Coke. I've wanted to talk about soda for the longest time. I'm going to talk about it now. When I buy soda, I only buy it when it's on sale because I consider it a luxury. Most of the time, I buy the 12-ounce cans. These are these little 7.5-ounce things. Most of the time I buy the 12, the 12 packs, which you can get on sale if you time it right. Three of them for about $9, no more than $10. But the shelf price, when they're not on sale, it's 6 or $7 for that 12 pack, which I would never spend. Now, sometimes they have these little ones on sale. These are 7.5 ounces, and that's why I bought them. They were on sale a couple of weeks ago. But I actually kind of like these because I don't always drink a full 12 ounce can when I'm having some snacks. These come in handy. What I have noticed, and I know this is not eBay related, but it's been on my mind for a long time. Do you guys ever price Coke in bottles, in those glass bottles? They come in a little six pack, six bottles. It is so freaking expensive to buy Coke in these little glass bottles. I believe, don't quote me, it's close to $5 for four small bottles, which hold, I guess, 10 ounces, but don't quote me on the ounces. It's basically three or four times what you would pay if you buy it in the 12 pack that I discussed earlier. But also, for those of you who actually drank Coke out of glass bottles when you were young kids in the 70s or maybe even 80s, don't you agree 
that Coke tastes better out of a glass bottle? Because I, I think it does, but I hadn't bought one probably in my adult life because they're too freaking expensive. Glass must be unreal expensive. But anyway, I know you guys don't want to hear my soda ramblings. You want to hear my eBay ramblings. And I think you've heard enough of today. Guys, I'm Crazy New York Driver, and you're not. Thank you for watching this video. Every Friday night, I come out here with these videos to help you try to stay successful as a seller on eBay. If you think I'm doing a good job, please leave me a thumbs up. It tells me I'm on point and appreciated. If you don't think so, tell me in the comment section what you want me to hit up, and I'll be more than happy to do it. Okay? Sales this week were good. Very good, in fact. I had some big ticket items go out. I sold items every single day. I'm sure there are one or two things that I wanted to tell you that I'm forgetting, which is about par for the course anyway. But as I said, sales have been good, no complaints. Nothing else to say. Go out there, make a ton of money on eBay, rock on in peace. And remember, sell your items on eBay, not Amazon. Cheers.